We're back in the studio with Ken Samples again. Ken Samples is with Reasons to Believe, reasons.org. And we are doing the Best Facts Apologetics Answer Show today, focusing on evidence for Christianity. And Ken's new book, Christianity Cross-Examined. I hope you'll pick it up. You can get it at reasons.org or wherever you buy books. Well, anyway, Ken, the question that I want to ask you today is about the new atheists. You talk about the new atheists in this book, and that was a pretty big topic in Christian apologetics for a while there. Tell me a little bit about these new atheists. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, as we think about Christianity and wrestle with the question of its of its truth, its relevance, and its goodness, I think many within the new atheist kind of context are the ones who raise these challenging questions. And, and even if the new atheism has, uh, you know, kind of slowed a little bit, uh, Christopher Hitchens, for example, who's one of the leading atheists, has now passed away. But regardless of these kind of very outspoken secular folk, uh, you know, the four horsemen of the new atheism, uh, Richard Dawkins, uh, Christopher Hitchens, Sam Harris, Dan Dennett. I would put other people in there, Peter Atkins, Jerry Coyne. These are very secular people, uh, either scientist or, uh, uh, you know, philosopher types. Um, what, what I think is very interesting is I, I think that the result of the new atheism has, has uh, resulted in what we call the nons. That is, these people who no longer associate with any religious designation, they're non, non-religious. So, so even though I think the new atheism is not uh, as influential as it was maybe 10 years ago, I think it's, it's left a mark. Now, again, I'd like to make the case that for me, there are, there are kind of two atheist varieties uh, in my own experience, I was I began studying philosophy in the late '70s, the early '80s, and uh, as part of my philosophical training, I had to read what I would call the old atheists. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to read uh, uh, Friedrich Nietzsche. I had to read Bertrand Russell, A.J. Ayer, uh, J.L. Mackey, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre. These were the kinds of atheists that I that I read, and one of the things that I one of the points that I make in the introduction of my book is I think the old atheists were actually more formidable. Now, now I'm not trying to disrespect the new atheists, but I think what the old atheists had as an advantage is that they probably lived at a time where they had to study Christianity. I mean, Friedrich Nietzsche, for example, his father was a Lutheran minister. Uh, he knew Christianity, and and I think sometimes because of their knowledge of Christianity, they know the arguments. They also know the the sensitivities or vulnerabilities of Christianity. For example, Nietzsche used to say, "Well, if you want me to believe in your Redeemer, then why doesn't the Church act a little more redeemed?" I think that uh, J. L. Mackey in his book, um, uh, "The Miracle of Theism." I think it's a very formidable presentation. Now, ultimately, I don't think any of these atheists are persuasive, but I think that the old atheists, they, they wanted to reason and argue, and they knew a lot about Christianity. I think with the new atheists, one of their flaws, or two of their flaws, if you will, is one, they don't know a lot about Christianity. I don't know how many of them have read St. Augustine or St. Thomas Aquinas or uh, Richard Swinburne or Alvin Plantic or William Lane Craig. Uh, but more than that, they often use kind of sarcasm and satire and ridicule. I was watching a debate that was held a number of years ago. Uh, it was between uh, Christopher Hitchens and Alistair McGrath. Dr. McGrath is, is a, an incredible Christian thinker. I think he has three doctoral degrees, all from Oxford University. Uh, one is in science, uh, one is in uh, divinity, theology, and the other is in intellectual history. Well, he had a debate with Hitchens, and um, McGrath is a gentleman. He doesn't interrupt. He doesn't 
talk over people. He's not looking to kind of go on the attack. I thought he had more substance, but Hitchens, as a journalist, you know, he knew how to he knew how to rev up the audience. He knew how to, you know, put a stinger in there that would really impact people. So I think that there are these two camps, the old atheists that are more intellectually formidable, the new atheists, they kind of play on, they, uh, their trade is kind of using sarcasm and ridicule. And I don't think it's an accident that the new atheists were birthed after 9-11. They saw what happened with radical Islam and death by people in the name of God. And that that really lit a fire, if you will. I know after that time, there was this push that all religion is bad. But many of these people recognize the fact that Christianity is truly good. When we think about global social issues, no worldview has come anywhere near the good that has been brought about by Christianity. I think it was actually Sam Harris, one of these people that is always attacking Christianity, that admitted nobody lies awake at night worrying about the Amish. If I'm not mistaken, that was him. There is this truth that Christianity is good and calls us to love our neighbor as ourselves. And a lot of the new atheists don't demonstrate that. You know, one thing that I like to do whenever I meet an atheist is I ask them, what evidence led you to atheism? I have yet to hear a good answer to that. Some of these new atheists like Dawkins have tried to put forward some positive arguments for atheism. I think they've been extremely weak. Uh, William Lane Craig, who you mentioned, demolished Richard Dawkins' entire God Delusion book in three or four pages and <laughs> just dismantled the logic of that book. So I think these new atheists, like you said in our past question, are a lot more angry than logical. Thanks for clearing that up. 